Yo, what's going on guys? So last week before the leak start, I did make a video about my simulacrum leak start strategy and it turned out okay, but it could have been much better and one of the reasons why it wasn't as good is because a lot of people did try it out, so prices of simulacrums were a bit higher and also a lot of items that you drop from simulacrums were much cheaper, so uh, it could have been much better. So this time around I decided to make a video about my top 5 Leakstar strategies and at the end of the video I am going to talk about what I am going to be doing. So let's start with the first one which is Blighted Maps. So when it comes to blighted maps, you can farm red tier blighted maps, you can farm ravage blighted maps, but what I want to talk about here is white and yellow blighted maps. And that is because uh, Endless Heist has been uh, pretty much removed from the game, so now people are looking for alternatives, and one of these alternatives, in my opinion, is white blighted maps and yellow a bit later. That is because the way they work is very similar to uh, heist and that is they are very uh, easy to do very early on in the league and also you make most of your profit from chaos recipe so the way they work is that you would uh, run them white or uh, rare once you have uh, enough gear and you can handle them rare and then you finish the encounter and at the end you're gonna uh, click on the chest and a lot of these chests are gonna be jewelry chest and one of the key ingredients for chaos recipe is jewelry also, obviously, on top of that, you're going to get some oils, some uh, currency, maybe some unique items, but they are not going to give you that much currency. And trust me, you're going to get a lot of Chaos Recipe. Most of the time, you'll actually lose all of your portals to uh, pick up all of the uh, chests, helmets, glass, and so on. There's just so much loot. This is actually crazy. And when it comes to rolling your maps, when I am doing uh, white maps, usually I would use any combination of sepia and Clear oils, uh, they give you a little bit more damage for your towers and they reduce monsters movement speed. Uh, so use any combination of these, but eventually you're gonna have uh, quite a lot of amber and teal oils and they are very good for yellow whited maps uh, because teal oils uh, are gonna make the uh, blighted maps much uh, faster. So if you use, for example, two teal oils, it's gonna be a uh, 60% uh, monsters are going to spawn 60% faster, but the duration is going to be 100 seconds shorter. So this way you're going to get way more uh, chaos recipes per hour. But it's going to obviously be a bit harder because there's going to be more monsters. So what I like to do is just add one ember oil. So I'm not using that many embers or ember oils earlier when I'm doing white mouth because they're usually easy. But if you are struggling with them, obviously you can still do it. But yeah, I usually use any combination of teal and uh, amber oils to make them easier but also shorter when I'm doing the yellow ones and when when you're gonna be doing yellows you're gonna drop higher item level items probably item level 75 uh, plus which means you're no longer gonna be able to do chaos recipe but if you still do from time to time one white map you're gonna drop a lot of uh, lower item level items so you'll be able to sell set of full uh, item level 75 plus and one item with item level lower and it is still uh, gonna give you uh, chaos from the chaos recipe. You can also obviously make them uh, rare, so use some alchemy or uh, scours and you just reroll until they have uh, mods that you can run. But if you can't handle rare ones, just run white, it's gonna be fine. And when it comes to pricing them, I personally think as long as you're buying uh, white or yellow ones for lower than 10 chaos you should be fine even 10 chaos is still fine if they're gonna be 12 chaos plus i wouldn't bother i probably would go for something else now the second strategy i want to talk about is heist and that is because like i said earlier endless heist is pretty much dead but heist is definitely not dead and you can still farm heist just regularly so you can just go and buy uh, contracts especially now there is a mod on map device that gives you two additional chests in maps so contracts should be much cheaper this league so maybe not immediately during first few hours of the league but definitely after like a day one maybe even after a few hours of the league start you should be able to buy a lot of contracts and just run heist and when you are running house heist this way i'll probably focus on uh, the ones that you can run with jayana so perception counter thaumaturgy and uh, deception and get a lot of Diana reveals and then also to blueprints. And at the beginning of the league, when it comes to blueprints, probably the best ones are gonna be uh, 
replicas because you can get a lot of unique items and some alternate uh, uh, rare items which are also pretty expensive usually alternate uh, quality gems are pretty hard to sell early on i did that one time and i had like 20 alternate quality gems and none of them uh, were selling people usually don't focus on buying them early on except for maybe very few specific ones so i wouldn't bother bother with that one the trinket one is also decent because it gives you some currency at the end and enchanted ones are probably not too great so i would definitely focus on currency and the uh, replicas the first strategy i want to talk about are logbooks so logbooks is one of these strategies that i can always rely on whenever something goes wrong with my league start so what i mean by that is as long as i have decent uh, character that uh, can clear around tier 11 maybe tier 14 maps uh, you should be able to clear uh, logbooks, especially because when you are doing logbooks, you don't even have to focus on killing monsters. If you don't have that great of a color character, you can just focus on uh, detonating chests and just picking up all of the loot from the chests. And then once you have a pretty good character and you can uh, kill monsters, you st start detonating them, but still you uh, avoid pretty bad remnants for your build, and then eventually you should be able to uh, detonate most of the remnants unless they completely break your builds. Like if let's say you are playing Toxic Rain and there is uh, one that gives monster chaos immunity, obviously you still would not go for that one. So yeah, the way I look at the strategy is whenever something goes wrong, I uh, buy a few logbooks, do some of them and I should uh, get decent amount of currency and then go, go for some other strategy. And when it comes to types of logbooks, I always try to focus on Black Scythe because they are usually the easiest to understand. Uh, you just get oh, the uh, artifacts and exotic coinages and you just buy currency. And a lot of currency are pretty expensive early on in the league, especially things like uh, splinters, which might be even more expensive this time around, uh, fossils. Here, as you can see here, even more splinters. Oh, and I just got <laughs> divine. That's pretty lucky. And here you can see some simulacrum splinters. Let's uh, roll a few more times. Obviously, this is on standard, so I don't really care that much about currency in here. Some rogue markers and so on. And when it comes to buying stuff, always just go to uh, POE trade and go to bulk and check all of the prices because sometimes you actually might be surprised how expensive certain things are. For example, one time uh, I was surprised that the Blacksmith Whetstone were pretty expensive because uh, that one link, Love Pro Bubble, were pretty expensive and you can buy them from the web vendor from Blacksmith Whetstones. So it was actually worth it to uh, buy Whetstones even more than things like uh, Alteration Orbs. So you would just go and buy them. And when it comes to buying them, I always go for uh, anywhere uh, after the half, so somewhere like here. And Tujan most of the time is just gonna straight accept it. Sometimes it's gonna take two, three times. But usually when you do it like this, he just takes it the first time, which saves you a lot of clicks. And the other one is uh, Knights of the Sun, because you can buy new logbooks basically from uh, Dunning. Uh, and also you can buy some exchange items and artifacts, which you would focus on the Black Scythe. If you are uh, a bit more experienced, you can also go for the Rogue. So that would be... the order of a chalice and this way you can go for some crafting but uh, this is a bit more uh, advanced you will need to know which items uh, you have to buy so that's why i usually just go for uh, black scythe and also when it comes to item level i always try to go for at least item level 81 because this is the tier of tier 14 maps which means you're gonna have a lot of loot from them and usually lower tier ones maybe if you can buy them for much cheaper i would uh, go for lower tier ones but yeah i personally try to go for higher tiers and if you don't know how to do logbooks i do have a guide on uh, my youtube channel from last league when i actually did logbooks at the leagues, league start so you can watch that video and the strategy number four is simulacrums so like I said at the beginning of the video, this was my strategy from last league and it didn't go as well as planned, but I am used to Simulacrum being just amazing. I used to be able to make multiple mirrors in the first week of the league and it has been nerfed since then and it's definitely not as good, but it's still very, very good and you can definitely 
uh, makes still a good amount of money. A lot of uh, my viewers uh, followed my strategy last time and they still were able to buy a headhunter or a mage build just from farming simulacrums. So the way I like to do them is I play my Toxicrain, which I just released the update on. So you can also watch that video. And I start with uh, highs. This time around, I probably would start with blighted maps, then maybe move on to a regular highs with just buying contracts and blueprints, and then logbooks. And after that, I would move on to simulacrums. And when it comes to simulacrum, most of your money is going to come from loot, but also from leveling gems. And leveling gems right now is not as important as it used to be. It was actually the main part of Simulacrum, but now gems uh, don't uh, give you as much currency because five ways uh, level up a uh, gem nowadays much faster. And also uh, there is a new bestiary recipe that lets you level up your awakened gems. So yeah, leveling gems is not uh, as good as it used to be, but you still get a lot of loot from Simulacrums. And especially if you are one of the first people that can start farming simulacrums very early on. So for example, during last league, one of my viewers did drop a card for a mirror, House of Mirrors, and he sold it for like 7, 8 divines. And that basically enabled him to drop, to buy a lot of good gear and pretty much immediately just move on to uh, simulacrums on the first day. And... He just started making a ton of currency. For example, when I was able to do simulacrums, like a day two, day three, uh, a lot of gems that I was leveling were already going down in price. And he had a lot of time for like one full or even two full days to be able to sell them for a lot of money. So simulacrum is one of these things that the earlier you are there, the uh, better it's going to be. So I would definitely suggest going for some of the other strategies if you uh, are not experienced and you don't want to rely on your luck. But it is still decent, it's just not as good as it used to be. And the last strategy I want to talk about is mapping. And a lot of you are probably surprised that I haven't talked about multiple mapping strategies separately. But the reason for that is because what we've learned during the last uh, league start is that altars right now are just insane. So in my opinion, it doesn't really matter which strategy you go for if you are mapping as long as you are doing one of the altars. So if you look here uh, at the tree, what I would do early on if I went for some kind of mapping strategy, doesn't matter what I would do as I, if is early on, I would uh, focus on getting all of the uh, additional maps, uh, map drops uh, points, uh, stream of consciousness for additional uh, link mechanics in map and essences for some additional currency. And then I would just rush for the altars, uh, especially if you are already in tier 14 maps. Maybe if you are not in tier 14, you can go for some other things. Uh, but definitely once you reach tier 14, you want to have all of your altar points. And I would uh, prefer to go for the red one because the red one uh, can drop uh, chaos orbs, awaken at sex dance, and the other one has a chance for divine orbs and exalted orbs, but they are pretty rare and sex and chaos, chaos orbs are pretty expensive early on, so red one is probably going to be better. But if the uh, icors or the embers, I mean, from the uh, red one are pretty cheap because everyone is going for them and then the icors from the other one are uh, very expensive then i would swap to go for the other one and it should be much easier because there will be uh, gateways so i believe there's one gateway here one gateway here so you can just remove all of these points and then just go for the gateway and swap positions so it should be much easier to uh, change your tree so that's what i would do and when it comes to additional link mechanics i mean in my opinion, it doesn't really matter which uh, thing you go for. Like I said again, altars is going to be uh, your main focus. So if you, for example, want to add uh, the blight, you just obviously take all of the uh, blight points. So you just type blight, go for it everywhere. That's it. If you want to go for bestiary, just type bestiary, go for it. That's it. I am going to link uh, below the video a few... Uh, Atlas passive trees that I would go for if I went for uh, some strategies, so make sure to uh, check them out. But like I said, in my opinion, just focus on the altars. It is just free currency. You don't have to do anything. Maybe go for additional uh, effect, additional uh, quantity, 
and maybe pack size from the growing horse if you can afford uh, some scar ups so you can have additional pack size in your map so you can get more uh, money from the altars but that would be it and the last thing I want to talk about is what I'm gonna be uh, going for and this is exactly what I actually am gonna be doing so I am gonna start with uh, some kind of mapping strategy this time around I'm uh, gonna do what I uh, showed you here so I'm gonna go for all of the uh, map drops for the essences for the altars and then I'm gonna look at the uh, trading website and, and I am gonna check how expensive are bridge stones, how expensive are embers, how expensive are beasts, how expensive are blighted maps, and I'm just gonna decide depending on the economy. There is no like straight up one plan what I'm gonna go for. And like I said earlier, there are some secondary strategies that if, for example, uh, nothing is looking too good or maybe I'm struggling with maps, I'm maybe gonna go for some logbooks. Or if I want to go for something chill, I would do blighted maps or heist. So that's the reason why I decided to show you these top five of my strategies, because uh, my plan is to go for any of them, depending on what I can handle at current point of the league and uh, which uh, things are expensive from which league mechanics. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.